very good afternoon. Madam Secretary General, distinguished participants, and more importantly, school delegates from India and from around the world. There is no better movement than being among the generation that holds the key of our destiny. And I'm very happy to see some, some very, and of course, hundreds of bright minds and the students from schools that makes me very pleased that the 21st century that we call the Asian century is the century that will undoubtedly be realized by the power of the mass that is sitting in this great hall today. And I thank the Howard Model United Nations for providing this platform for the last many, many years to realize the untapped potential of our generation. in order for this potential, this energy, to use the ability, the knowledge, and the spirit so that we end up in a better world than the world that we are in. Harvard Modern Art Nations is a golden opportunity to realize your dreams. And this is a learning gateway to share your ideas, your knowledge, and more importantly, highlight the global issues through a wider lens. And I've been witness to your intense debates in the last few years, particularly in my two times participation in the debates that took place in India, in Delhi, and also in Babuneshwar. And I was very much in a hurry to participate in the third event that I have participated in the last three years. Being among you tempts me to share my personal opinion and my views and my experience as to how you, the youth, think of the future as you grow up. As a student in college and university, I always dedicated myself to work and to study, to engage and to study. And I'm so pleased that you not only focus on study, but also engage and work outside your school environments. Today, you have that environment. I have worked with various state and non-state institutions. If I knew what I would be doing later, I would have done more than what I had done and I have done in the last 17 or 16 years. Today, I advise you that don't wait to become the leader. Today, think that you are the leader because inevitably, the leadership role is going to come to you.
I, being an age of less than 40 years, have an experience of 23 years work. Of course, I would have cherished to spend my young life to enjoy, but life is to work and to work for the betterment of others. And I'm sure you will do more than what the last generation has done and what I have done in order to work for the betterment of the life of the future generations. I have always been inspired by others around me. One being awarded is, award, is an award for one, but inspires hundreds and thousands of others. And I have been inspired by others. And I'm sure any one of you being awarded is an inspiration for the rest, for the rest of you. You always think of the generation shift that is happening. That means the student's role is becoming more prominent in defining the responsibilities that you are going to undertake. To identify better ways how you can make the world better. And of course, in life you have to map out your area of interest. And I'm sure in all walks of life, you have always mapped up your own areas of interest as to how we can make a society with, with, with all the needs that it requires. And of course, that would require you to focus on various fields, whether this is economy, this is politics, and other society work that, that, that calls upon us. Certainly, we all work for global vision to be realized. The global vision requires skills. The skills that you have to understand the nitty-gritty of it. And that involves, as I mentioned earlier, various areas. And I'm so pleased when I was coming in the car, going through the agenda, that you have already sessions that covers almost every aspect of life, whether this is life in politics or life outside the politics. As I mentioned earlier, we always talk about a better tomorrow. And that better tomorrow is in your hand. Therefore, the, the ball is in your court. How you can give and how, can you, how you can provide us with a better world tomorrow. You probably have a tougher job than the previous generation because you are inheriting lots of challenges such as terrorism, such as climate change, such as environmental issues, and of course so many immigration and so many other problems of the day. Therefore, you need to do more and harder work than the previous generations because you are inheriting tougher issues in order to make the world better and safer for our generation. When I was going through your sessions, I came across a session that speaks and that will focus on the question of counterterrorism. You need the precondition of a better world, and that better world can only be realized when you deal with the most basic problem, which is insecurity, which is terrorism. And of course, you have focused on Afghanistan as a case study, and I represent Afghanistan here today. And let me briefly share with you what is terrorism. What is insecurity and how Afghanistan is facing this major phenomena? This phenomena is not a phenomena of Afghanistan alone. You all know the world is facing this phenomena increasingly and dangerously. And Afghanistan, you may know, is the victim of this terrorism that has been, th that has been there for decades. Afghanistan, what you hear in the media, probably you will not have the right picture as to what this nation is all about. Afghanistan being an old nation, a nation of at least 5,000 years history, unfortunately being an education, being a geography that faces the spheres of the problems of humanity, which is terrorism. But of course, 
Afghanistan, as any other nation, aspires to become peaceful and, and, and stable and prosperous. We're glad that the world community is with Afghanistan, standing alongside Afghanistan in order to make Afghanistan peaceful and by extension make the world peaceful. When I say terrorism, how we define terrorism in our, in our, in our country and how we see terrorism evolving in Afghanistan and by extension the rest of the region. Unfortunately, the terrorism that we see in Afghanistan is being promoted. Unfortunately, the ethics that is so critical in diplomacy, in politics, is lacking in our world. Afghanistan being the victim of terrorism is a terrorism that is being promoted to advance national interests. And I hope, very much hope, that the future generation will look back as to what you inherit as a problem that will make the world much in danger if this continues to, to exist. And I hope that you, the young generation, will, will be providing an environment that will include a politics of ethics, a politic of morality, a, pol a, a morality that will make the world as one world. We speak of globalization. We speak of the concept of globalization. Globalization defined the world as a, as a world defined as a one village. And that village can only exist if there is a political will that is for the betterment of each and every one. And I hope that you, the younger generation, I'm glad that you are given the opportunity that while being a student, already pretending that you are the leader of tomorrow, and you will eventually become the leader of tomorrow. Therefore, the challenges that we face in this world, the challenges that we face around the world, particularly in our part of the world, is the challenge that is waiting for you to take on this challenge in a much smarter, in a much stronger way. And that requires cooperation. That requires feelings for one another. That requires the right politics. That requires more energy, and that requires creativity, innovation. Now, come, I'm coming from Afghanistan, and you may know that I, was, I heard that three Afghan delegates also repre representing Afghanistan here in your group. I'm so pleased and proud that Afghanistan success stories in the last 16 years is one of our younger generation's achievement. And I'm very proud to briefly tell you what Afghanistan has achieved as a nation in the last 16 years. Afghanistan being in the turmoil. One of the biggest reasons behind the turmoil in Afghanistan was illiteracy, which was being exploited by the terrorists and by those who are trying to weaken Afghanistan. Today, after 16 years, Afghanistan, unfortunately, is in the hands of safer hands, which is our youth, a country 16 years back with almost no school and no college and no university. Today, with thousands of high schools, with over 200 universities across Afghanistan, with millions of children, boys and girls in school. That is the success story of Afghanistan. And this is the youth that is making Afghanistan better than the Afghanistan that was 16 years ago. Afghanistan, the second youngest country in the world after Uganda. 65% below 25 age is the potential that Afghanistan will undoubtedly be a better Afghanistan along with the effort, along with the nations that are present today in this great hall. As I told you earlier, Afghanistan youth is proving the ability, the talent in each and every field. In Afghanistan, we have the youth parliament who engages in politics, who engages in all other activities of any other nation in order to promote the leadership skills. Our women, being in the politics in all other walks of life, parliament represented by 28% of our women in Afghanistan. That is how the stride, that's how the effort being built and being made 
by the Afghan nation, including girls and the women that lead in politics in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, a great part of Afghanistan's state and non-state institutions are run by the youth. Let me give you one single example of the graduates, the students who graduated from India, who have returned to Afghanistan in the last 15 years. 60,000, 60, 60,000 Afghans youth, boys and girls, graduated from India in the last 15 years, and they have returned to Afghanistan to, to build and to rebuild their country. This is what Afghan youth have done, and certainly the rest of Afghans who are growing up will be coming and doing more than what the current youth have done. And they are paving the ground for future boys and girls to come and study in India. And similarly, hundreds of thousands of other boys and girls are being graduated from the over 200 universities in Afghanistan. Education is the best tool in order to have a better tomorrow. And I'm glad that Afghanistan is walking the same way and the same path that the world is. And of course, I'm so proud that you will not only be looking into your own nations, but into nations around the world. After all, we are one village. Globalization is defined into a one village societies. And therefore, I hope that the desire for a peaceful and stable region and the world is only possible if we all cooperate, if we all seek peace in one other countries. And I'm sure that the leaders of tomorrow who have gone through the experience of the past or in the current will be providing that environment that will be an, a world better and, of course, more peaceful and stable than it is today. Afghanistan youth, let me share an example of a two months back where Olympiad in Amity International in Delhi, 57 Afghan youth and Afghan boys came from Afghanistan and they competed, they contested with hundreds of other students boys and girls in Amit International University, in, in Amit International School in, in Delhi. Out of 57, 20 gold medals were awarded on the Afghan youth. This is the talent and the potential that Afghan students and youth have. This means any nation, if given the opportunity, can become better and can, can use the potential that exists in nations. Afghanistan being a victim of insecurity and terrorism in a little, sp in a space of 15 years is making great efforts in terms of education, in terms of the re reconstruction efforts, and surely Afghanistan with the current pace of progress, especially in terms of the youth, Afghanistan will be a different Afghanistan, and Afghanistan that you all will be welcomed to visit, as was the case in the 70s, where Afghanistan was one of the best touristic sites in the region, where people from Europe would visit Afghanistan in a beautiful, beautiful country. And that will only be possible if our youth work hard, educate, learn, and give Afghanistan a chance, another chance, as was Afghanistan that we had years ago. The Afghan government, as I represent today here, is fully committed to realize the potential of our youth. And we have we've had a number of programs, a program called National Youth Program. And that youth program is providing opportunity who have graduated to be admitted to government and non-government institutions in Afghanistan. Our cabinet more than 30% or 40% of cabinet is run by the Afghan youth in the 30s, are ambassadors, and I still consider myself as one of you, not older. In conclusion, let me repeat again, students are the most crucial seg segment of any nation's development. Their contribution is of prime importance. They need proper guidance and direction in order to realize the potential that they have. And I once again thank the Hard World United Nations model for providing this opportunity for the youth of the world so that they can share the knowledge, 
so that they can discuss and debate intensely and out-of-the-box thinking, which can only be possible through our youth. And I'm glad that today you are given this opportunity, and I look forward to your intense debates and a productive outcome of this conference. Thank you very much.